Welcome to What the F***. We'd like to thank the Euthanasia Alliance of America for underwriting our show. When it comes to depression, don't kill yourself. Let the EAA do it for you. Let's get a preview of tonight's show from Timothy Walton from our legal department. Timothy, what have we got in store for tonight's show? We have several stories. Uh, first up, is there a way to make it seem like your life is longer? Experts say yes. And is there a way to make your life happier as you age? Brain scans reveal all. In fact, scientists <laughs> love to use toys like brain scanners to get women to watch porn. We'll find out soon how an important scientific study will benefit all of mankind. Finally, what is the buzz on the latest tourist attraction in San Francisco? We're about to discuss all of that and more. Hey, thanks, Timothy. We'll see you at the end of the show. Let's meet her. Every week, you eagerly welcome them into your living rooms. But enough about home invasion nymphomaniacs. Let's meet our guest. In the far chair, she's cuter than a baby duckling crapping on a puppy. It's library worker Jenna Christ. In the middle chair, she's nurse and member of the comedy troupe The Suburban Squirrels. It's Frankie J. She's so sharp, syringe needles use her to administer vaccines to each other. In between them, it's former Starbucks and Pete's barista and professional midget cage fighter. It's James Ilg. If hilarious puns were the Kentucky Derby, I'd enter him with a horse and a jockey. Finally, sitting next to me, he's the host of the KMVT show Keith Explains. It's Keith Stanfield. <laughs> if woody monologues or paper towels, I'd yank him off in the men's room, then dry my hands. Issue number one. If time flies while you're having fun, does it slow to crawl upon reflection? Scientists think they figured out why fun times whiz by but at the time, but in retrospect, seems to have gone on forever. Called the vacation paradox, our perception of time is affected by the number of memories we form. When we are doing something new, the hours pass by quickly. But all the experiences lead to lots of memories, and when we look back, there are so many that it feels like we were there for ages. On the other hand, when doing our normal routines, fewer memories are laid down and the day seems to drag. But in retrospect, they fly right on by. Speaking of memories that stick... <laughs> Yeah, that it, that's going to be burned into my brain for forever. All right, Jenna, I'm going to stick with you, uh, start with you. Uh, you buying this or not? <laughs> you always have these weird videos. Um, <laughs> that will definitely stick in my mind. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it makes sense if you uh, vary your um, routine and uh, do new and exciting things. It's going to kind of enhance your life. So, yeah, you're going to lay down new memories, so life will seem more exciting and more... So yes. Okay. Is there anything that you, anything that you do that that causes that creates a lot of memories, even though on ref reflection that but otherwise fly by while you're doing it? No. You can't remember right now. Right? I don't remember. <laughs> I've, you know, I've had a lot of head injuries in my life. D okay. Not joking. This is true. So um, I do wonder what my memory would be like if I had not had. Head injuries. So you so. have a lot of them, therefore you don't remember them, right? Because they're my, my, they're routine. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Oh, another head injury. <laughs> All right. Frankie, you're the nurse. What's your take on this? Post-traumatic encephalopathy is what she's <laughs> suffering from, which has erased her memory. But my take on this is the holiday paradox is the reason that people go out and have affairs because the memory of something brand new and exciting lasts a lot longer. So uh, why not go out and uh, have a ball? Do you remember uh, all your affairs? <clears throat> I remember, uh, let's see. Uh, uh, I guess again, they're, they're I guess not that's new. Oh, there's so, there so many of them, right? It kind of kind of like a big blur. <laughs> Do you remember your first one? How's that? Yeah. <laughs> 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 or if you have an explicit memory of all your intimate relations with your husband, I'm going to be a little bit concerned. But anyways, James, <laughs> what do you think? I think that only the happy ones you remember. If you don't remember the bad ones, like, I mean, I don't remember doing my taxes three years ago or oh. even the first time I did my taxes. Yeah, so but, well, you're a major cage fighter, right? So, and you win the world championship often. So do you remember any of them? Uh, yeah, just the first one. Um, I had a distinct... Um, uh, arm advantage. Oh, there yeah, you go. Arm span. But which you also you also get arrested a lot. Do you remember any of those? <laughs> I, again, just the first time. Just the first time. Yeah, that brothel shut down shortly after that. Right. <laughs> and your body cavity searches. You, 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 do they all just blur by? Jeez, there's so many. I can't. 
can't not, I can't even remember the first one though. Oh, okay. Can't even remember. Again, that. happy experiences is key. Happy experiences is key. That's right. right. The holiday paradox. Oh, okay. Keith, you're known to have a really good memory on your show. Mm. What's your take? Uh, I partly it confuses me that they're calling this a paradox at all. <laughs> I mean I I thought paradoxes involved mirrors and prime numbers. Oh, okay. Um, so, but for me, I, I I barely remember going on vacation at all. Okay. So I don't buy it at all. But you can you can cite the cite lines from Star Trek episodes by episode and season. You know how do you explain that? Well, I can, but I'm a major geek. Okay, but do, but you watch them it's, over. It's genetic. But you watch them over and over again. No, right? Not really. <laughs> not really. No, no, they're they're just burned in. Burned in. Just one one viewing and and you're and you're hooked. Oh, okay. All right. Happy is experiences. There, I'll throw Happy this out to the table. Okay. Is there anything you wish you could forget? Yes. Besides being here. My last five no. minutes. No. <laughs> <laughs> My response to your question. <laughs> really embarrassing situations. <laughs> yeah. They kind of burn in sometimes. Right. And that's they keep so coming yeah, up at like true. 2 o'clock in the morning. Okay. All those things when you can't sleep, suddenly it's like, oh, man, did I really do that? And that was like, you know, when I was 17. Oh, Oh, but then you awful. learn things from that, though. I mean, you remember the next time, oh, yeah, I'll get his name. <laughs> <laughs> and his number. And, and his, his number. number. Make it a prime number. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, but are there things that you do like a million times that you could wish you could remember better? Oh, yeah, like the, like the locks on the door in the office. Like, what's the combination? Right. They've changed so many times. That now I'm like all confused when I come back from the bathroom. You'd think I'd be refreshed. No, I'm like punching these guys. Yep, mm, drive me nuts. Okay, all right. Yeah, the little things that you do as habit, like locking the car or things like that, and you do it so habitually that then like two seconds later, you're like, did I lock the car? I don't know. And you check again. And Do you remember mm -hmm. where you put the car keys this morning? Uh, yeah, I, I had a big problem with losing them, so I have this big rock climbing carabiner that I attach to either myself or my purse. It's a rule, because I was always losing them. Do you have a memory of attaching it this morning? Uh, no, but I can see them right now. Oh, there you go. <laughs> there you go. All right. Yeah, anything you wish you could forget, Keith? Tons of things. Okay. Did Most we... of my shows, in fact. <laughs> <laughs> but you remember them all, right? No, th no, I don't remember them, and I still wish I could forget them. Wow, because you've done a lot of shows, right? <laughs> I have done Talk about your shows. paradoxes. Yeah, it is a paradox. <laughs> Star we, Trek, but not his own wait, shows. Should we re re rephrase it instead of the vacation paradox to the Keith Stanfield paradox? The Keith paradox. The Keith. That would be the great. Keith. I would like to have something named after me that wasn't a crime in states. <laughs> How about a virus? Keith a dot. Keith a dot. All right, we're on to issue number two. When it comes to regret, is it best to forget? Brain scans reveal that living a life without regrets may be the key to aging well. Scientists think regret can help us make better choices in the future when we are young. But as second chances decrease as we get older, the benefits of mulling over what might have been also decline with age. Scientists scanned the ventral striatum and the anterior cingulate cortex of the brain. Did I pronounce that right? Boy, oh boy. Uh, which are linked to regret and regulating emotions respectively. They found that depressed seniors had activity in those regions when losing in random games of chance, while emotionally healthy seniors had no such activity in those brain regions. Researchers think that healthy older adults may employ helpful mental strategies to avoid regret while depressed older adults may blame themselves for bad outcomes. If so, it might be possible to train people to use these mental strategies to help preserve their emotional health in old age. Speaking of people with no regrets. Okay. The male girl next door. Makes this unclear on the <laughs> Yeah, um, not that it has to be male specific or I'm gonna have to find. But... I'm gonna have to find this hedonism place and uh, and it's probably I'm in the Santa talk, Cruz Mountains. And I have to talk to Rusty King about swapping his vacation video <laughs> for, for viral videos. But, uh, anyway, Poor Rusty. so I, I wonder what your ISP thinks about you. Probably not very much. <laughs> <laughs> they're, probably, they're probably creeped out. James, I'll start with you, a man of no regrets. Uh, what you a man of no regrets. <laughs> <laughs> you buying this or not? <laughs> wow. Uh, I don't know. I mean, we'll find out. You know, if I live to be 100 um, and I have no regrets, then I guess that's true. But I sincerely doubt that I'll live that long. Well, do you have a lot of regrets or just a few regrets? 
I don't know, I guess a few big ones. Okay. Not a lot of little ones. Because remember, based on the prior story, the more often you do something, the more likely you are to really? forget, and the fewer times you do it, the more likely you're to remember. <laughs> Thanks so, for reminding me. Oh, there you go. Wow. Oh, it's already forgotten that. I forgot. I forgot. What did we talk right. about earlier? I don't I, remember. I, you say that again? <laughs> <laughs> I forgot what I said. <laughs> When are we going to start the show, by the way? <laughs> I have yeah. no idea. It's when, it's when, I, when I get my cue to go, I don't That's know. A, oh, they haven't done sound checks no, yet. No, they haven't done it. Mm. You know, I, I mean, I think what was the first topic? We're still lighting. Uh, <laughs> something yeah. about something. A dog, yeah. right? A dog. Oh, there there you go. A dog's butt. And a That's dog's right. butt with sunglasses. A dog's butt paradox. I think, wasn't it a dog butt paradox? It was. I remember it was. dancing. Where yeah. And Keith was Wait, involved. I, I hear dancing. You remember dancing? Yeah, something about dancing. There was dancing? Uh, was it dog dancing? <laughs> is, that, is that something you regretted, though? Uh, I don't regret watching that old, older gentleman dance. It was pretty awesome. Okay. All right. He nearly slipped, though. That was scary. Right. Yeah. Okay. And then finally, yeah. <laughs> Threw something Thank out. God. Tile. He has all that all right. ability. So, so right. now he knows don't dance on slippery pool tiles. That's right. Yeah, they say don't run. If he had raced around more as an eight-year-old and perhaps broken then both perhaps. of his legs while running in the pool area. Well, he probably did it before, but he didn't regret it, so there, there you go. Yeah. Right. He, did, he thought he was safe. He didn't he create a holiday man. paradox uh, memory. That was the problem. Yeah. Now, now, Keith, do you, do you agree with this? Um, the key to the key to you know, go again in old age is is to re forget your regrets. Uh, well, I forget almost everything shortly after it comes out of my mouth, and I'm living a great life. You're happy. You're happy, dude. So I as much as you I can think remember. This anyway. is a good idea. Did you remember to take your medications? Uh, I have a thing with a tick mark oh. every day. Oh, okay. Some, some, the Vida like a nurse, some. Oh, actually, Frankie take, brings them to you every day, right? In a little, little paper cup. Little thing mm -hmm. with the right at ten o'clock. on it. Mm -hmm. okay. Thursday's always an R. That's confused okay. me. So, it, <laughs> should be a yeah. T. Yeah. So well, Frankie, then it'd be you, confused you with this? Tuesday. Hmm. Are you buying I, this? Uh, parts of it I buy. You know, um, the worst part is all the regrets that you have. Right. The hardest part is forgiving yourself so you don't keep thinking about them at mm. two o'clock in the morning. Gotcha. Mm. Jenna, is, is this a paradox because, you know, as we, when you're young, should you have regrets? I mean, as young, you, you can make up for all your mistakes, but when you're older, shouldn't you have more regrets because you, you can't undo more, the screw-ups? More time to have accumulated regret, uh, regrets. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I guess, you know, you're young, you're learning, you're finding your feet, you know, you it's good to kind of dwell on the things you should be changing. And then once you're older, you know, it's like 20 years ago, you shouldn't be obsessing over some little thing that you messed up. And it's good to let go and move on, or that's what their yeah. the hypothesis When you get was. old, you should just accept that you're an idiot. Okay. Yeah, you already know. Yeah. You've, you've, yeah. You have the life experience ample to back evidence, it up. Ample that's evidence, ample evidence in my right. case. I'm right. <laughs> accept and move on. Okay, we're gonna have to leave, regretfully we'll have to leave this segment. Oh. We are on to our first break. Wow, you really should wear pants even though you're behind the desk there, Keith. Oh, issue number three. Will you go blind if you're not kind enough to rewind? New research finds that looking at erotic movies can actually quiet the part of the brain that processes visual stimuli. Watching movies or conducting any other visual task usually sends extra blood flow to this brain region. Not so when the movies are explicit. Instead, the brain seems to shunt blood and therefore energy elsewhere. Perhaps the regions of the brain responsible for sexual arousal. <laughs> or perhaps researchers <laughs> inadvertently discover that the penis does have a mind of its own. Researchers also speculate that the brain can either be anxious or aroused, but not both. During orgasm activity in the brain regions associated with anxiety plummets. And if you're looking around, focusing on visual details, scanning for danger, it may not be so easy to focus on your arousal. Which is why I close my eyes and she usually has a bag over her head. I think we have some of the porn footage used in the study here. Okay, I'm going to massage my head. Okay, let me put my hand on this. Y'all step on my head. Okay. Oh, that feels good. Come on. Oh, yeah, that feels good. Oh, that feels good. Oh, man, it's great massage. Look at that. Oh, that feels good. Yeah. Oh, yeah, a little higher. A little higher. A little lower now. Okay. Oh, that feels good. Ah, yeah. I, I hope he did not get a happy ending. I just hope he doesn't. But uh. I, I, I hope the goats a don't get to go a... in an uncomfortable place. <laughs> really, I, I, wanted I think one of those orc. goats had little shoes on. Well, I did. That's what it looked yeah. like. Little booty Something socks. Was squeaking. Yeah. Those, I think those are just their hooves. They're not stilettos. But uh, 
All well, right. thank yeah. goodness. All right, Frankie, I, I oh, assume no. of the people at the table, you watch the least amount of porn. That's just an assumption. Agree or disagree? Watching porn shuts down par the part of your vi brain associated with the visu visual stimuli. Watching porn? Huh? <laughs> 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 Worst lead question ever. ever. Yeah, really. <laughs> so agree or disagree? What? Give me the question again. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Watching porn shuts down part of your brain. It does. Okay. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> and it shunts the bre the blood to another part of your body. Even for women. Absolutely. And what part is that? The clitoris and the vagina. Okay, I'll take it. Wow. Absolutely. What's that first one? I've never heard of that first one. <laughs> it that doesn't exist. Ooh, that it's, it's like El Dorado. Oh, <laughs> El Dorado. It's the women's El Dorado. There you go. <laughs> Many men have tried to find it, but they, they get lost on the way. Right. They die on the way. It's really and... a mythical place, kind of like Atlantis. Yeah, there you go. Mm -hmm. Tell me, right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so so this happens to women as well as men, because I, I I can tell you I know where the, if if it's true that blood goes a certain part another part of the body I know where that goes for a dude, but uh -huh. Devin, for women I'll just have to take your word for it, right? That's, yep. All right. Okay. All right. Perhaps someday you could see it for realsies. Well, you know, do I can I borrow five bucks, Keith? <laughs> Is that how they go for nowadays? Well, no. Oh, I need twenty for the cover. The okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Give him another five for the lap dance. Okay. No, it's, I think it's 20 now. Oh, it's, oh. man. Well, <clears throat> San Jose passed the uh, minimum weight, living wage ordinance. So I think oh, they haven't passed it yet. They haven't passed no. it yet? Okay. Oh. Well, Jim, you'd know. Huh? Well, about the living wage <laughs> ordinance, yes. <laughs> the other thing, eh, not so much. <laughs> so, so, Keith, you buying this or not? Um, the first time I read this, I, like you, thought, well, of course we know where that blood's going. <laughs> right. But then they said they're doing it on girls. Uh, so then, being scientific minded, I had to think, why? Evolutionarily, why would the brain shut down the visual cortex? Mm -hmm. and then it to me, <laughs> if you're having sex, the other person is doing the most disturbing, disgusting looking things. And so if you shut down the visual cortex, you are more likely to do it again. Yes, but that's that's See, women whose visual cortex don't shut down die out. Because oh. at most they <clears throat> have one child. Well, wait a minute, hang on. It's that um, holiday paradox and the memory thing. That's while you're having sex, not while watching porn. Isn't that two different? James will tell you that's two different things. I, I think this <laughs> is. <laughs> I think it covers over. Darwinian evolution hasn't had a chance to catch up with the Betamax. Okay. Right. James? I'm still processing are, that. Are last you buying that? Or are, you, are, you, are you just stumped? <laughs> You need more blood to go to your brain. Yeah, I think uh, yeah, the blood needs to come back. Oh, sorry. Okay, here we go. Give baseball. <laughs> think about baseball. <laughs> the most go. boring thing possible. Unless baseball turns you on, in which case, think about soccer. Mm. Ooh, yeah. It's Jenna? pretty exciting. No. Curling. Jenna, you buying this? I like soccer. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> With the balls. All right. Sadly, we're, sadly, we're out of time. Yeah, that's oh, what damn. she said. All right. I think she says your time is up. There you it's go. It's a little different. Yeah, that's, that's, that's definitely what she says to him. Your money's run out. <laughs> Credit card didn't go through. Issue number four, will tourists flock to a museum of fake cocks? The proprietors of the Good Vibrations Sex Shop are opening the Antique Vibrator Museum in San Francisco to showcase kinky collectibles from the late 1800s to the 1970s. The new 300 square foot museum in the back of the Good Vibrations Shop on Polk Street, which some people pronounce as Polk, the sex shop owners have established a museum hoping that it will attract sales and admission is free. Vibrators exhibited include a hand crank model that was made for homes without electricity and a pneumatic powered one from 1906 powered by compressed air. Which you said to blow your mind. I think we have footage of the last one here. Wow, um, that's a that's a that's Is an that a giggling guy. baby in a vacuum. Yeah, I think what so. What search terms came up with that? You don't want to know. <laughs> what was the mom doing when she was pulling the vacuum away, though? That's what I want to know. Oh, you. I really don't know, but I, it's nice to see that it's been repurposed for a more G-rated application. Yeah, I like how you're assuming it's mom. I mean, usually it's dudes with vacuums. It's that was a woman's voice. Yeah, but you know, you don't know that that woman wasn't doing the video taping, and she was giggling, and it was mm. some other guy. Could be. Keith, you going or not? 
Ha <laughs> ha. Well, I've been. You've been? Yes, we've we've seen the antique vibrating devices, which yeah. were used, I'm sure, for only medical purposes as prescribed by a doctor. <clears throat> okay. And did you did you purchase anything? Uh, well, none of those. They're not for sale. They're, oh. they're invaluable oh. because they're <laughs> antiques. Okay. That's right. <clears throat> Right. Jenna, you yes. going or not? Oh, am I going to the visit the Poke museum? Street. Poke Street. <laughs> I'm gonna go to Poke Street. I don't know. I like my good my tools more modern. <laughs> okay. so, Maybe we'll go to the one in Oakland. <laughs> okay, so you're more you're more you're more of the you're more of the latest and greatest kind of thing, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Like the S2000, you know, with the wireless and the solar power and, and all solar that. Solar power. Solar power. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Use it while you're sunbathing. There you go. In open field of grass. <laughs> really, it's there green. Uh, well, so. <laughs> it could be wind generated. All right, Frankie, have you been? Uh-uh. No, but you know something? I was driving down Polk Street not too long ago, and there's this amazing shop that I can't wait to go in because the whole thing is like slut clothes for women, and it just looks intriguing to me. Isn't I just, slut a pejorative term? I have no idea. What is pejorative? Maybe they yeah. reclaimed it. Yeah. Yeah, it's, derogatory? It's, an, it's derogatory. Putting down. Oh. Icky. No. Icky. Yeah. no. Maybe they've reclaimed slut. A bad thing. <laughs> they've reclaimed. The, they, it's not, no longer there's a There's nothing wrong with being a slut. You can be a, you can be a, a great slut, man. <laughs> You know, I've seen some great sluts in my life. I always wanted to be a great slut. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Absolutely. Never worked out. James, I thought you that, would know about great sluts. That could be your midget wrestling. Well, yeah, game. but I never know about it personally. Absolutely, the great slut. <laughs> the great slutini. Yeah. Oh, yeah, oh that, the Italian awesome. slut wrestler. There you go. Well, mm -hmm. do, 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 is this, is this, the is this store targeted to sluts? Because I figured... No, you know, I don't know who it's targeted at. I just know it looked to me as I was driving down Polk Street that that looked mm -hmm. like a slut store, and I could go in there and mm -hmm. buy some <clears throat> interesting, right. profound um, paraphernalia. Do you think this is where all the women who... Do you think this is where all the women who watched uh, Sex in the City hang out, this store? That's in bars. Oh, no, With no. the teenies. Well, you'd think, but then, but then, but then no, they give No, 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 I don't think so. I don't think they hang out in this store. I think they... <clears throat> Mail ordered from Mail ordered from company from the from, internet from that's right that's from companies like Keith. Keith, that's right. Keith, you think they have they have a website, right? I'm sure they have a website. Okay. I, I'm sure they do too. And they probably ship, right? Yeah, overnight, mm -hmm. possibly. Yeah. yeah. Or if you live on the peninsula, you know, within you twelve drive. hours. It's a giant. Yeah, well, the peninsula, no pun intended, right? <laughs> 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 Not one that I thought of, but pretty good, kid. <laughs> That's a really big one, right? Oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> take a pill. Take a pill. You stretch you. that one too much. Oh, yes, I, I do. Go. I know. It's hanging so, over the desk. You ready to end the segment? I mm. guess we are. The director says so. so. Okay, so we are at the end of the segment. All right, let's welcome back from the break. Um, we are at our fact-checking segment of the show. This is where our fact-checker, or our, in this sense, our legal <laughs> department, tells us where we went wrong for liability purposes. And for that, we, we are again joined by Timothy Walton. And from our legal department, Timothy, how do we do? Well, uh, the panel, as usual, was terrible, but Jim, you were great. And uh, uh, I do need to bring up some problems with the scientific studies themselves because there are several issues that were not touched upon. Uh, so, for example, uh, we used to think that time flies when you're having fun. But thanks to what we now know as the holiday paradox, We've learned that the way to make your life seem longer and happier is to live an erratic and unstable <laughs> lifestyle, selfishly choosing hedonism without waiting for forgiveness from others before forgiving yourself. Been That's that, right. I've been saying that for years. Without regrets, let others call you crazy and unpredictable. <laughs> Timothy, will will you will that be your uh, new new approach cool. going forward? <laughs> Absolutely. I intend to put that into practice immediately. You mean like right now? Uh, well, soonish, yes. Okay. Uh, I, I do have to really take issue with one of the other studies that was discussed. Um, the study about how women's brains react to erotic images. First of all, I, I think you should note that the data was derived from only 12 subjects, not exactly a representative sample. But Timothy, Moreover, I could only get 12 women. I could only you, afford 12 women. You know, I mean, that's I mean, right. It's, you I, wish you could get I 12 I can see women. how it would be difficult for scientists to recruit uh, uh, subjects for this study. Uh, 
What, uh, women watching porn? Isn't that like, isn't that what women do all the while, time? While laying in a big white tube and having radioactive things injected into their brain. <laughs> that's exactly. that second exactly. part. And that's that brings me to the off. second point about this study. That's my Saturday uh, night, dude. This, <laughs> the study used positron emission tomography, better known as a PET scan, rather than asking the women to do something with their hands while watching pornography. <laughs> and all this so-called heavy petting did not result in an answer to the perennial question of why they talk over the sex scenes on Game of Thrones. <laughs> um, I, I, I blame the writers for that. It will be good to practice. Uh, I tend to use the next time I visit San Francisco. I wonder, does anybody have a good pickup line uh, for uh, meeting women in the antique vibrator museum? Um, let's see here. Uh, 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 I just figure because it's so conveniently located in a store that, you know, sells porn, that uh, it's a, a really good opportunity. Unfortunately, I did discover that the Good Vibrations store on Polk Street does not sell brain scanners. <laughs> well, that's true, but uh, I, I, in regards to your line, I just figure go natural, not, not artificial. That might be a good line. No. 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 Uh, but go natural. Go, go natural. natural. It's greener. Do it. Do it normal. Do it the old-fashioned way. It's greener because you don't use as much electricity. I've got one of those at home that plugs in. It, uh, yes. Yeah. Yes, that's true. But uh, the the plug-in one <laughs> uses electricity, and that of course is generated by natural gas, which generates greenhouse emissions, which which ends the planet. So you should probably do it the old-fashioned way. Wait, a wait, good way to go back to uh, uh, compressed air. Oh, that's just that. That just blows. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Timothy, we got one minute left. What else you got for me? Oh. Uh, damn it, Jim, I'm a lawyer, not a prolonger. Oh, very interesting. <laughs> That's what she said. Uh, yeah. Uh, don't you get paid by the hour? Don't you get paid by the hour? Can you squeeze another minute for me, baby? <laughs> that'll cost well, you another that's what ten dollars. <laughs> it won't. It'll be a new experience, so you'll have a longer memory of it, right? Mm -hmm. You're creating yes. a holiday paradox, baby. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I wanted to go back to this uh, midget wrestling idea. Oh. <laughs> okay, James. <laughs> Is that really I something that I need to research? Because uh, I, I, I think spending some time on that might uh, be in my calendar for this coming week. Uh, you'll have to talk to James after the show, but I'm sure he'll be able to hook you up. Yeah. All right. <laughs> well, I, I might have a detailed report next week. Thank you very much, Timothy. We're out of time. Thank you very much for the show. Thank you very much for doing your fact checking. We'd like to thank the panel. Awesome as always. Later. I'm Jim Tu, host of the KMBT show, What the F***. Like thousands of American men, I suffer from an unusually large penis, also known as tripod syndrome. Now, for those of you who don't have tripod syndrome, you'd think having an unusually large penis would be a blessing, but it makes walking and social interactions awkward and sometimes impossible, let alone the discomfort you cause your partner. Thankfully, now there's a treatment for tripod syndrome. I recommend Keith Statenfield's penis reduction pills. Just three pills a day in my 32 inch penis is now a more manageable 14 inches. It also works on girth as well, so you can swap out those parachute pants for relaxed fit jeans. Ask for Keith Stanfield's penis reduction pills at your local drugstore.